Good morning, everyone. It is spring. At least it is here in Toronto. It is so much warmer after Stormageddon last week. Oy vey. It's, uh, you know, now it's... Uh, almost almost swimsuit weather like they were uh, experiencing in England I believe uh, earlier this week anyway spring is coming and it's it's probably here the daffodils are coming up and you can smell it in the air now along with that we also get allergies for those of us who have had allergies all our lives or have late onset allergies and what happens with that is our eyes tend to water our nose and throat gets itchy and any number of things so given all that stuff we want to keep it simple and easy plus the fact that whether you are a high-powered ceo whether you're a busy mom at home whether you're a grandmother volunteering everywhere whether you are writing the great novel of your country whatever it is we're busy no matter what stage of life we're in, we're busy. So how do we look our best, which results in us feeling our best when we step out in the world to do our thing? And because tomorrow is Earth Day, it's, uh, it, this is timely too, because as some of you know, I'm all about making it simple, streamlined, and being eco-responsible in product and in packaging. So, we have busy lives, so we need to keep the makeup simple and easy and effective. So let's focus on the highlights, para cha, not meaning the highlight that you wear, you know, on certain places of your face. Um, and just a little thing, um, I can't see what's happening with uh, comments currently so if I don't answer your question please post it anyway and I will attend to it after the video is finished and this is up online and I will certainly get to it then if I don't answer it here today all right so um, the most important aspects of hair and makeup the things that I see uh, that women tend to, to skate over, so to speak, that we tend to forget and why we don't get our, uh, you know, our best looks. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, to touch on so that we can bring that back up to where it needs to be. There's four ingredients with good makeup, plus the fifth one is hairstyling. That's all it is. That's all it is. Your foundation is the number one thing. If you want to wear a lot of drama, a lot of makeup, depending on your situation, or you want just a light, you know, get me out the door, I'm going in the garden, or I'm working on the farm, or I'm, uh, you know, uh, attending to children, or whatever it is. Even skin tone is number one on the hit parade. And what I find with the hundreds of digital, well, thousands of digital makeovers uh, that I make is I find that women tend to kind of skate over the same areas. And that is the inside corners of the eyes here and on the lid. And many of us who have bags or that sort of thing, we tend to... Uh, to skate over that. The other area of importance is around the corners of the nose. That's just the way it is. And as we age, the corners of our mouths, they tend to get lined. Our uh, nasal labial folds, I'm now getting a second one right here, but that's the way it is. Um, so all those things need to be paid attention to, to look your best. Now, if you didn't wear any other makeup, but just evened your skin tone, it would make a huge difference. Allergy season, watery eyes, and aging. So how can we deal with that? Well, as I've told some of you, I've been playing around with uh, MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, and I was playing with the HD Forever. Now, HD Forever has changed their formulations. So, mm, 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 toss and turn, I went with the MAC Pro Longwear. And the trick with wearing your concealer, okay, is to use a little detail brush, not much bigger than this and just go into the areas where you need it. Now, if you have spots or sometimes at this stage, we get little marks on our face from the sun. So you want to cover those, but you don't want to put concealer 
like down like this. You know how you see on some of the YouTube? You don't need that. And what a waste of product. If you want to highlight, don't use your concealer to highlight. That's where you use your foundation uh, powder, uh, your, 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 yeah, what is it? Dual finish uh, powder foundation, two shades lighter to use for highlight. Otherwise, it gets to be over the top and way too much time. So, detail where you need it. It, it trench here for me, it's around the nose, corners of my mouth, and any little spot that I might have. So, you do that. Then you either use your finger because of the warmth of it and just kind of tap it in. You can use a damp sponge, but that's one extra step. If you can use your finger, it's better. Now, here's the trick, ladies. When you finish putting your concealer on, wash out your brush. Because if you don't, your brush doesn't perform properly the next time you want to use it. So simply just use a little bar soap, you know, um, hand soap, whatever, and just ring it under the tap, put the soap on your finger, clean it off, rinse it, towel dry it, put it away for use next time, number one. Okay, so then, once that's done, then we use our sponge, whether it's a triangle, a beauty sponge, or the sponge that comes in your dual finish powder, whatever, and cover everything. And the way I do it is I do the forehead first, and then where I've got concealer, I, I stipple on, I don't drag it on, I deposit the dual finish powder with a stipple so that you're not dragging and moving it, you're and setting it in there, okay? And then when I've done that, then I go for round three and I use a uh, foundation brush and I go, I mix the dual finish found, foundation that I use plus I mix it with the two shades lighter back and forth and then put that on my eyes and in the corner. Now, that's my skin complete, it's finished, and if I do nothing else, at least I have even skin tone, which as we age is a huge, huge factor. Now, if I'm gonna go further with this, I would add my blush. So, and I add it with a blush like this, and I put it up and around here, just a little bit, and blend it in like so. Then, if you want to go a little further and you want to contour, depending on your face shape, most of us need a little help here at this stage, and we need a little help along the sides of our nose because it, they, it, our noses do tend to grow when we get older. It's just, you know, a fact of life. So you, you do those three things. And then I go back in with this tiny little brush and I go into the powder that's two shades lighter than my foundation, and I just go across my eyelid for my shaped eyes. If you have Lauren Bacall or hooded eyes, then you don't need to do that step, but you might want to put some right in here. It's funny, most of us can use a little bit of lightness right in there. And don't, don't go shimmery or glittery, ladies. Just uh, uh, if you are going to use a shimmer, a low, shimmer mixed in with the dual finish powder will give you just that slight slight edge of just a wee 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 bit of shimmer and that's all we need so your foundation is set and i include blush in that because that's part of it oh and i forgot i go into with my my same um foundation brush here and i go into the two shades lighter and i do a final sweep here and down here to highlight the center of my face and about the middle of my nose up to about the bridge of my nose that's all not the top of the lips not the, not anything else that's and not the eyes that's that's not necessary not at this stage because we 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 do things a little differently okay so so that's the foundation and um you know, that's, that's, uh, that, that will get you anywhere. You can put on a little mascara and lipstick 
you're done. You're, you're fine. But when you have even skin tone, it changes your entire look. And when you spend just a wee bit of time at it, doing it this way, it, it, it's fast, it's easy, it's eco-friendly with packaging and product, and uh, you'll, you'll enjoy the results. Second is eyebrow shape. Okay, so we tend to, I have to get a Kleenex here, we tend to as time goes on, our, we all know that our eyebrow shaping changes. So, one of the ways, one of the easiest ways to help us get back to the shape we need is to use the credit card method. And oftentimes what happens is, and I've seen it even with microblading, when we age, the front part of our brow comes down and the back part of our brow. Now, some for more for some than for others. So what I suggest using is the credit card. So you take, do I have a credit card? <laughs> I try not to use them. I'm just gonna use a Kleenex here then. You wanna go straight across, let me see if I can get this. From the bottom corner right across to your arch. Draw in your guideline and then make sure that the line across the top, use the credit card the same way. Put it across both brows and make sure that they're both aligned. They're both, the top of them is both at the same level. That will give you an idea as to how to, you know, jig them back into place again. And then any, and what, what I suggest doing is taking, you know, um, maybe a half hour or an hour, depending on the time you have, and draw, you know, maybe a little line across both the front and make sure that the front line is in, is in line with the tear duct. Forget the nose. It's in line with the tear duct because as we age, our brows tend to disappear along here. So you want to bring that back, but you don't want to bring it too far and you want, but yet you want to bring it enough, you know, like Goldilocks, just right. So you line that up. You line up the top, you line up the bottom, and then you set your credit card and you draw a line. You set your credit card, you draw the line. That will help you get back on track with your brows. So what you want to do is, is reshape your brows and everything that's outside of your guideline, remove it. And that includes peach fuzz. If you're, uh, and everything that's inside the line, where you have bare skin, that's what you want to fill in. If you have thicker brows, you don't want to go over, you don't want to add uh, uh, brow powder uh, or eyeshadow or pencil if you use it um, to hair that's already there because then it gets too thick and heavy looking. You wanna just put it in the places that are bare, or if you have a patch that's missing, you know, you know just fill it in. And uh, you know, I've got plenty of um, uh, brow tutorials on how to use the credit card, how to, how to do a number of things to help you get the right shaping. So once you've got your shape right, you see, then it's easy to attend to it when you're doing your makeup on a daily basis. And again, I strongly recommend eyeshadow. And if you're grayish, I recommend print by Mac um, and you can, or scene, and you can use it with a light hand. And another good color is uh, coquette. You can mix coquette with uh, the scene or the print. And, and, and then there's also for lighter brows, whiter hair, Omega and scene are two good colors by Mac. And again, I am not I am not endorsed by MAC. I, I am not sponsored by MAC in any way. Uh, I am not sponsored by anybody anywhere. I receive no benefit, no anything. I do this as a service uh, to help my, uh, my, my age group in my daughter's name. So the reason I do recommend MAC is because their products are well milled and they're available worldwide for most women around the globe and they are available online and they have a return policy which is which is good if you're not happy with your product you can return it in within 30 days with your receipt and do an exchange or get your money back so that's important and the other thing is if 
you are one of those ones who, you know, uh, pl plucked your brows and they haven't grown back, then use an eyeliner sealant mixed with the eyeshadow. Uh, and again, I've got videos on how to do that. Uh, th that will that will give you long wear on your brows. Why do I say this rather than uh, using pencils? First of all, pencils melt, and when we're coming into the humid weather, they melt. Number two, you can't find good color. I don't care what the product is, you can't find good grays uh, in, on the mar in the market for uh, um, eyeshadows and pencils for, uh, for um, eyebrows. Uh, and the Anastasia stuff, it's too heavy at this stage. We have to remember we, we, are, we don't have heavy, heavy, heavy brows. So, so we're not gonna, we don't wanna bring our brows back to our youth. We want them to complement where our face is today. Anyway, that's it for brows. Now, next is your lash line. If you followed me at all, you know that I'm a, a huge fan of false lashes. Why? Because they're faster, they're easier once you've got this skill, and they give you the natural drama that is missing as we age. Now, if I close my eyes here, maybe you can see I'm wearing Kiss, I believe, it's number threes. I can't, I can't quite remember. But my Kiss lashes, and the reason I recommend Kiss is because they wear so extremely well. You can clean them with a Q-tip and uh, some alcohol. If there's any glue that you can't peel, that you don't peel off, you can clean it off. And then, you know, just store it in a little case. And I, my lashes, I get it, I get anywhere from three to, to six. Sometimes I've even had eight months wear out of a pair of lashes because I care for them. And for I think it's, well, they're two fifty here in Canada, thereabouts, or maybe three dollars. That's excellent value and environmentally good. Now, for those that can't wear false lashes for any number of reasons, I recommend a tube mascara. Uh, Blink is one that I really like. I have used it for years when I wear mascara. Why? Because the tubes wrap around the individual lashes and when you go to clean them off, they come off beautifully. It's, you don't need any extra cleanser or anything like that. They just remove beautifully. Plus, the other thing is they are waterproof when you're wearing them. I know it doesn't make any sense, but believe me, they wear really well. So when you curl your lashes, sidebar, which I recommend if you do that, you take your eyelash curler and run it under the hot water for a few, for a few seconds, about 10 to 15 seconds, dry it off, curl your lashes. Why? Because that's just like a curling iron for your lashes. So it, it makes your lashes go up and then you apply your tube mascara and you're good to go. Now, then what you wanna do is the using the gel liner on the underside of the upper lid or better known as the water line. There's two methods. You can use your, your gel liner like Fluid Line from MAC or Bobbi Brown has one, they're, they're, they're good. Or you can use a gel pencil. I really like Annabelle Smooth Liner. Now here's the trick with that. Again, run your pencil under the hot water so that the lead or the gel softens up a little bit and then apply it on the water line and it will have much better staying power. And if you want even more, just go back in with a little bit of eyeshadow over top and voila, it's good for the day. Now the other thing is, is the, uh, is the eyeshadow underneath on the lower lash line. I've seen uh, um, mascaras where I can tell it has not been removed. I'm not a big fan of mascara on the lower lashes at this stage, just for a variety of reasons. But what I do love to see is mascara, or I'm not sorry, uh, eyeshadow, which is a couple of shades lighter than the eyeshadow that you use for eyeliner on top. And you, you go from about the middle and blend it out and go past 
go past the line and go straight out. Don't go around, go straight out. Why do we do that? Because as we age, our eyes tend to round out. So we're bringing back the almond shape to them. Uh, and, and then you blend this. You don't want it going right across. That's too heavy unless it's for evening and that's a whole different ball game. This, we're just talking, you know, daytime, uh, you know, get you out the door fast. Now, for eyeliner on top, I go, I go past with just, I, I take my brush and go just like this once and then I come across and again, there's a video on how to do this. And then after I've got my lashes on, I put a little extra brown powder just across the top here and just blend the end, the end of it so that it's not defined, which I think is better for the older eye. Okay, so I think that's it with respect to lashes. Now, for those who have Lauren Bacall or hooded eyes, using a shadow that is like a print uh, scene, which are the, the blues, or not the blues, but the grays in the MAC line, or coquette. Coquette and brune are really great. I still wear brown a lot, even though it's gray. I mean, every woman needs to have... A, a true brown and the colors I recommend by the way that are listed are true colors the under you don't see these grays or greens or yellow or red undertones so for the the hooded eye and there's a video on that you just a, a, a go along your lash line with more weight of the eyeshadow you deposit it there and then blend it up so it's a little bit heavier on the end. And just blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. For the hooded eye, the Balorn Bacall eye, the beautiful Asian eye, what, whatever you know term you want to put on it. Now, for those of us that still have a bit of a lid left, although mine's disappearing at warp speed, I make sure that this my, my lid is highlighted. And then I use um, either Brune or Coquette and just go in not if I close, you can see where um, th with the age, uh, what happens is that I've lost that. This, this comes down and this happens to all of us. It used to be up like this, but it's not anymore. So the contour, when I look back and I do this, of course, if I just do it right in the contour, when I'm looking straight ahead, it disappears because the fold of the skin above has gone over top of it. So what you have to do is go above your contour line and really blend. This is important, ladies. Really blend that and then stand back and take a look and make sure that it's, that it's covering the skin that's covering the contour line or the hollow. Does that make any sense? Anyway, again, there's videos on this, on the channel. And while I'm uh, um, talking about the channel, if you're having trouble finding anything, ladies, or you have something specific, you go on to my channel page and you can do a search. There's a, like an eyeglass that you see and it's right across the top where it has playlists and a number of other things that you that you can turn to you can go into search or go into playlists and i've broken everything down into hairstyling uh makeup uh extensions um uh best beauty uh tips makeovers of other people i've done and of course my soapbox and i also have voice uh wardrobing uh etic modern day etiquette and performance skills so but they're 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 hidden away but you just hit on playlists and they'll all be listed there for you or go into the search and you'll find what you're looking for um, okay, so so that's with the eyes, and now we're going to move uh, down to the lips. I recommend Maybelline 24 Hours Stup not Stupor Stay, Super Stay for a variety of reasons. I think it's one of the best on the market, and I've test driven a few. Why do I like it? Because watch. It does not bleed, feather transfer. And for those of us with tiny lines around our mouths, that's a biggie, especially if you're drinking uh, coffee that has oil in it or you're having anything, you know, slightly oily to eat. 
And not even sometimes when you're not even doing it, if you're wearing liquid foundation, I can tell you, it will go. It will help to feather your 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 um, lipstick. Another reason why I like the dual finish powder foundation. So, using the Maybelline, that problem is solved. Number two, it really does wear well. Now, what I'm wearing today is number twenty five which is flame, and then I wear number 50 over top. Now, with all the Maybelline lipsticks, this is my favorite one, by the way, or combination for summer, and sometimes instead of 150, which is a warm highlighter, I'll wear number 40, which is more of a cool, uh, not a cool, a coral. And if I want more of a pinker tone, I'll wear 110, just depending on what I'm wearing and my mood. And sometimes I will, I will cover it more so that it's lighter and sometimes just in the center. The trick with the Maybelline, and I'm going to do a video on this, is do you know that you can just dab across the top, smoosh your lips together, you know, like they used to do in the old days, and that will give you a stain. If you want a more defined lip, then you go around and you don't need a lip liner, which is one less product. Get your shaping right and then you fill in. Now, when it comes to the shaping, this is where selfies are marvelous. Take, take a selfie of yourself up close and personal, and the foundation I'm wearing is the Burrell Dual Finish um, Powder Foundation. Anyway, it's all listed in the files, what's recommended, and in the, in the description box below. Take a look and take a look at your lips to see where they have changed. When I look at my lips, you can't see it so much now, but this side of my lip is longer than this side, and it's flatter. This side sits up more. This side of my lip sits up higher. So in other words, this side of my mouth seems to be squished. Well, this, and, and it's been squished and lengthened where this side just has stayed normal. So what I have to do is I have to raise this side a little and not along, bring it, turn it back in before I get to the very end. And when I apply on the bottom here, I have to go quite a bit outside my lip line to bring it in balance with the other side. Now, that's, that's you know, Pretty balanced or as close as I'm going to get, I can tell you. That's about as good as it's going to get for me. But the thing is, now my lips are corrected. And, and we all have varying things with our lips. And as we age, that's something that continues to change as well. What happens with many is that their upper lip becomes very small. So what you need to do is to go outside the roll of, go to the, at least to the full extent of the roll of your lip. Try that, see how it looks. If you need a little more, go outside. And when you're augmenting your lips, it's better to do it more in the center than at the ends, okay? Augment here. This is where you need it, except where you have to correct. And you always want the corners of your lips a, a, a little darker than the center. Why? It's like a 3D lip. It gives you, it gives you a fuller looking lip without injections and all kinds of other things. So, and then when you've put your, and so you can do that. So, okay, now back to coloring. Another thing that you can do is I will use this flame because it's a good, it's a good, uh, a solid red. It's a true red. I will apply that in a thin coat, in a thin coat, let it dry. And then I will apply number 55, which is perpetual plum right over top of it and let it be a little bit thicker. But I never, I don't never put it into the center because I use the center is where my highlight goes. When that's dried, then I add my highlighter, let it dry, and then put on the bomb. The, the, why do I do that with this color? Because this gives me the depth. See, this is the thing, ladies. 
You can still have lighter looking colors on your lips, but you need depth. If that makes any sense at all. You, you, you need correction and you need depth. So if I were to, well, I could, you know, if I wanted to make lighten this up, I would just, you know, wipe off any gloss that may be on it and then add an extra, add, add a very light color and I would lighten this right up. But I would still have the depth, so to speak, so that that adds to the, um, to the 3D look or the corrected lip or the updated lip. Um, do you know what I mean? It, it brings our lips back to a place uh, that they were well, when, when we were younger. And, you know, like my lips, if you've seen pictures of my, um, uh, my foundation stuff, especially, you know, before and afters, you can see how thin my lips are. And here's the other thing. Run, don't walk away from shimmery or glittery lip colors if you need to augment or correct your lips. Why is that? Because if you're going over the roll of your lip, and you're using a shimmery color, that shimmer will catch the light on the roll. And it will sh show up as being, um, well, it just show that, you, you know, you can see the roll and that you've augmented your lips. Whereas when you use a matte, darker color, you camouflage it. You don't see that roll at all. Like, you, 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 uh, you can't see the roll here on me. And yet I, I just posted a picture on our Facebook page and I can see where I was using a shimmery color. I could see the roll of the lip and I thought, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a mistake. But anyway, so that's it for, for makeup. So then you can, you can add more, you can add, take away, not do as much, but again, foundation and getting correction is the number one thing. Correction of brow shape, correction of lip shape and extending the eye. Are, are what we want to aim for. And it's good to take maybe, a, you know, an hour and, and, and get all these things corrected for yourself so that, so that, you know, you're feeling good comes the spring, you've got it all going on. Now we'll look at the, the hairstyling or which is the fifth element in, in our overall look. Number one thing on the hit parade that I notice is that women from their temple up here, the crown area, when they lift away the hair from the roots, that does more for your hairstyle and your face shape and your overall look than just about anything. It's like an even skin tone. Lifting the circumference of your hair. Learn the art of back combing. Here's two of the tools. These are the only tools I use. This is for tighter back combing. This is for looser back combing. And again, I've got videos on it. And depending on your head shape, you will want to back comb certain areas, maybe more than others, or you may not need to at all. But to learn the art of back combing is, is really good. And no, it doesn't wreck your hair when you do it properly. And when you comb your back combing out, if it hasn't fallen out, you brush the bottom of the hair first, and then you move up the shaft until you get all the back combing out. But I'm not suggesting back combing the ends of your hair. I'm just talking the roots. And the other thing that I, I am a fan of right now, um, again, it's, you know, for lots of reasons, is the John Frieda Frizzies. I have both the, um, the flexible hold and the hard to hold. When I, on Sundays, when I need to have, once my hair is done and it's set, it needs to look good and yet still be okay, I use it. This, you can see here, this is, you know, coming down. Well, on, on, on Sundays when I'm singing, I, I, I can't afford for that to happen. I need for my hair to sit in place or I often wear it up. But if I'm wearing it down, I will put a hairspray in like that. It will hold it in place. It adds a sheen, and when you comb that hairspray out, there's no stickiness, there's none of that nonsense, and if anything, those with thin, fine hair will will be happy to note that um, it adds a little bit of kind of volume to your hair. It, it feels like it's been, it's been strengthened or you've got just a little bit more. So, you know, that's... Um, that's uh, the, the skinny on that. Hair, hair, hair. Learn three hairstyles. 
practice them that work for you, that work for your lifestyle, that are easy for you to manage and that always look good no matter what you, you're, you're doing. Okay, so, and um, just, you know, I just want to make a note too about the products we use and the packaging. What I recommend, uh, it, it's, on, it's on the Facebook pages and it's in the descriptions below the videos. That is very minimal. And I've showed you this before, but this is, this is all I have. That does me for everything. I mean, everything. And when I buy something, I think twice about it. Uh, you, you know, I don't buy just because uh, it sounds good. So often we are led to believe by the, uh, the makeup industries that, oh, it's like going to your hairdresser. You know when you go to your hairdresser and you think, okay, can you just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I want here. Can you just cut my hair or do whatever? When we leave those choices in the hands of what we think are the professionals, and yes, many are, but many aren't, um, we set ourselves up. If it works out, great, wonderful. And when it doesn't, well, we have to take responsibility for choosing to give away our power. Knowing your face shape, knowing your hair type, knowing what needs correction, what works best for you, arms you for when you go to buy product or when you go to get your hair cut or styled. You need to know you. Don't leave it up to the, the, the so-called professionals to tell you what looks good on you. You know, and that includes me. I mean, um, I'm just giving you tips to, to, to help make it better for you. But you have to consider your lifestyle too. You know, and, and, and for those that like, like when we're going gray, those that like long curly gray hair, that's wonderful, it's great, but if it, it depends on your lifestyle. Uh, you know, what works well for you. Uh, and the other thing is, when you put this all together, you want to stand back and you say to yourself, what is my look? What is my signature look? Am I fashion forward? Am I more homespun? Am I, um, uh, um, uh, you know, business executive type? Uh, am I, you know, name it. Uh, you know, what is it? What do you do in your day? How do you dress for, for, for your lifestyle? And then how does your makeup and hair uh, work with that overall look, if that makes any sense? And the other thing that we can do, because it is spring, uh, is to um, take a look at our bags, our brushes, our palettes, clean everything out. If you have a makeup drawer with makeup in it, clean it out. Uh, only, only keep what you use. Only keep what you use. If you've tried something and it's not working that well, and you think, oh, I'll come back to it later. If you haven't liked it, guess what? You're not going to come back to it. So, so give it away. Uh, clean it, you know, uh, alcohol it, the powders, you know, clean everything off, sanitize it. Give it away to some women c that, that can, can use a helping hand with some product. And only keep what you need. Uh, and, and again, echo responsibility is really important in all of this too. Uh, you, you want your makeup to be fast and to be easy and to be uh, carefree with minimal touch-ups and to look good from the time you put it on to the time you take it off. You know, that's the goal. That's the goal here anyway. So make sure that everything's cleaned. You've got some, you've got some updated uh, skills. You've got your back on track with your best look and the best way to approach your face and your hair. And uh, bring on spring. We're ready. Um, so I can't see any questions. Um, maybe it's something that's, I don't know, going on but I will be sure to uh, answer any in the in the um, comment section once this video is posted and make sure that if you aren't subscribed that, that you do subscribe and to ring the little bell and if you're not getting notifications you may have heard that YouTube is oi like Facebook oi going through um, you know algorithm changes and all that sort of stuff and uh, you know deciding for us what we may or may not want to watch best thing to do is to go to the channel page and the latest will be right there and everything is broken down in in uh, playlists so um, 
it's uh, it's easy for you to uh, you know to to access whenever you need it. So I can't see any questions. So I think that um, like I said, post your comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Enjoy, happy spring, and enjoy Earth Day tomorrow. See you later.